Our main man, John from Memphis, do you feel the Bloodline storyline has reached its peak? Or do you feel that it still has some momentum? Well, the, the Saturday show was a miss. One show missing is not the end of the world. They still have Jey Uso versus Jimmy Uso. They still have Roman Reigns versus Solo at some point. They have Roman Reigns and Jimmy Uso versus Jey Uso and Solo, if they break them up sometime soon. And they still have Roman Reigns and Cody Rhodes. So, no, I think that they've got a long way to go. And I think that uh, one bad match I don't think is certainly the end of the Bloodline storyline. You know what but, this uh, is? I just realized. It this is me and you and, and Buddy and Richie. Yes. Just do the That's same exactly guys. what this is. And, uh, and uh, we'll, we'll turn this guy or these guys to team up instead. Yes, over and over and over again. I, yes. So Dragger here on the uh, chat says Pepper Coyote is going to make an a cappella short version of the theme for our show for Granny. Yes. Because, of course, Granny hates the song, but her claim is the song is too long. Right. So we are going to get a 15-second a cappella version of it, which uh, we will be able to play on the show. Although, Dragger, I should say that, you know, we do have a contest for a uh, polka version that's right. Uh, granny for Granny's theme, but uh, maybe we can we can switch it up here. All right, this person here says, "Fellas, who do you think should end Gunther's IC title run?" No one. I think it will, <laughs> think it will be a good opportunity to elevate somebody. I'd like them to introduce Braun or Carmella to be. I could see Braun Breaker being the guy to show up and end the run awesome. of Gunther. Yeah, and I'm not saying it should happen now. I mean, it seems clear he's going to break the Honky Tonk Man's record. Which actually, you know, <laughs> Honky Tonk Man should come out and break a guitar over his head on like the day before and, and cost, him, <laughs> cost him the deal. But, uh, I mean, come on. We're going to break the Honky Tonk Man's record? Of all mm. things, that's my childhood. Sad it's actually prior to my childhood. I started watching after that. Wow. It's my childhood. But, uh,. I had thought that uh, Gunther will break this record, and have, having vanquished all of uh, uh, the possible IC title contenders, he will then turn his t sights to a bigger prize, and they can do Gunther versus Roman at one of the pay-per-views. They still have a lot of pay-per-views to fill between now and WrestleMania, and I, I think we all think it's going to be Cody Roman 2 next year in, uh, in Philadelphia. Uh, but they have, like I say, they have a lot of main events to do between now and then. I figured Gunther, so I figured Roman would be the guy, honestly, to end Gunther's streak. And I'm sure I just caused a lot of people to get really, really angry listening to my voice right now. But uh, that's what I thought was going to happen. This person here says, why is the real world title being treated like a legitimate title and defended like it? Shouldn't it be unsanctioned considering Tony stripped punk of the title? Well, I mean, obviously, to me, I mean, it should be, you know, Punk's self-proclaimed real-world title. Huh. Real-world title should be in quotation marks. Mm -hmm. But it is odd that they are, when they do the advertising, yeah. they're saying Punk will defend the real-world title against Ricky Starks, and they're not it's... putting in quotation marks. They're just, well, it, they're calling it the real-world title. It's no That's just weird. It's no different than the FTW title. Yeah, thanks. These guys have a belt. Yeah. They want to fight for it. Okay, that's fine, whatever. It has, it has no effect on... Well, why the fuck doesn't everyone in the entire company then make up a belt then? I don't know. If it's that easy... I don't know. All right, <laughs> well. How did the deal come about to get Dave, Vinny, and yourself in WrestleQuest? Well, first off, that's right. We are in a video game. That's right. And you can head to my Twitter, at Brian Alvarez. You can head to the front page of WrestlingObserver.com. There's a story about me on my own website yeah. and our appearance in this video game. But uh, the person you should ask is Admin Tony, because he is the guy that uh, that got the whole thing all set up and going. So I can't answer that question for you. I don't know, but I, I know would. that we are, and it seems pretty exciting. Here's how it went from my point of view. I was asked if I wanted to be in a video game. I said yes, but don't use that picture, and I provided a different one. That's mm. the that's the extent. That's as far as it went. WrestleQuest, everyone, available in uh, all sorts of platforms: Xbox, PS5, Twitch, Steam. I believe it's available on your phone as well. Uh, WrestleQuest.com for more info. You know, my uh, wife didn't think I looked like me, but well, she did don't. think that you looked like you. We we kind of had the same conversation. And that uh, Dave looked like Dave. 
Yeah. Although when I showed the picture to Hanalei, she immediately picked me out. Okay, okay. But she's very wise. <laughs> Glad to we hear. Were, uh, we, were, uh, we were talking today, and uh, she's three. And she goes to uh, she goes to this preschool. She actually it's, it's camp she's going to this summer. She's going to this this camp, and you know we always try and get information like you know what happened at camp, and you know she's a kid, and all of a sudden today she just starts telling this story, and uh, I don't even know how it got started, but she goes, yeah, we were at camp, and uh, I think it started because there were kids at the playground today that were like kind of kind of kicking at each other, and I think it sparked her memory, and she goes. Yeah, at, at, at preschool, uh, Bob kicked Frank, and he was kicking him, and he got in big trouble. And and teacher Mary, she started yelling at Frank, and she said, Frank, don't kick Bob. Frank, that's not nice. Don't kick Bob. And then Harrison got shot. <laughs> what? That, that crazy, escalated very, very quickly. I don't know what the fuck she was talking about, but that was how she concluded her story about uh, her nature preschool camp. Harrison got shot in the middle of this little brawl. Anyway. Bernier says... It, doing better. Go ahead. <laughs> that's what I said, too. I said, is he all right? <laughs> if Roman Reigns is the number one wrestler in the world today, who do you think that will be two years from today? Oh, God, that's way too long. Way too long. I have no earthly idea. But, I mean, Cody Rhodes would be a good guess, I yeah. think, is, is probably a pretty safe bet there. Roman will still be making his way down to the ring by then. <laughs> he does enter Let, the ring very slowly, yes. Yeah. Let's see. Where are we here? Do you think this MJF face turn was how and when they always planned to have it? Or do you think that this was an audible? Well, I don't think they expected it to end up the way it's ended up. I think that I I think I don't know this, but I think the whole thing was they were going to do the Adam Cole MJF um, Battle Bowl thing. They were going to win. They were going to lose to FTR. MJF was going to turn on him, or maybe the other way around. For all I know, maybe that was the plan the whole time. Adam Cole was going to turn on MJF, but one way or the other, it was it was going to lead to the match at Wembley. And you know everything has happened. They won the tournament. They lost to FTR, and they're facing each other at Wembley. I don't think that what is happening where they're still best buds, it's a babyface match, I don't think that was the plan. I think that they have just kind of gone along with it because it was so great. But um, I, I can't imagine. But maybe they did. I don't know. I mean, I they clearly, when, when MJF made his return, did not expect that he was going to be over oh. as the biggest babyface in all of AEW. No. I mean, and they went, and that was another one, you know. He was over, but they ended up going the exact direction they were planning on going. And I presume that's largely happening here, but I do think that things have changed somewhat. I, I would suspect they've changed some details about how things have gone, but this is still where they expected to end up. But when, if you watch when they first started teaming, we were not supposed to cheer for MGF. We were supposed to laugh at him. <laughs> but he was so great... Being an over-the-top babyface in peril, and the one guy who would, uh, 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 when he was the babyface in peril, would crawl for the hot deck, he wouldn't make a comeback and then tag out. He would fight as little as he had to just to create an opening to tag out and do it. He's so good at it that uh, he, he like accidentally got himself over this way. Mm -hmm. So Ricky Starks comes out for a promo. God, this was the weirdest segment I have seen in I don't even know how long. Ricky Starks, last week, cheated to win the Owen Hart Cup. So this man comes out, and he is cheered. He talked about how much money he had, his expensive shoes, his expensive bag. Mm -hmm. He's rich, you see. So to review, if you cut a promo saying that you have expensive things like, oh, I don't know, a Tesla or a watch, and you only eat the finest steaks in the finest steakhouses, people might not like you. I have no idea getting? what you're talking about. Hey, guys, did you love this clip? 
If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show, all of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.